Hi guys, hope you're doing great. In this video, I want to talk about a uh, application for some of the universities in Norway. One of them is NTNU, uh, University of uh, Science and Technology. And the other one is University of Oslo and University of Stavanger. So let's see if you want to apply for a master degree at NTNU. If you click uh, like C uh, studies, master programs in English, you can also, I'm going to also talk about the PhD opportunities, but let's first see the master programs. We have the, uh, we have international master program, joint Nordic master and Erasmus Mundus. So we can see each of these. Let's see. So for international master program, you can also see the location. So NTNU is has three location. One of them is Shevik, the other one is Trondheim, and the last one is Olsen. So depending on your subject, your location it, it will be determined. So for example, if you want to, let's uh, go with what I had. So maybe I can explain it better. Material science and uh, engineering. You can see the degree will be Master of Science and it's based in Trondheim. You can watch a clip if you need uh, to get to know them. So the, dur the duration of this study is two years. It's in Trondheim. We can see the requirement in it a little bit and how many places they require and uh, what you need to do before applying. So, and then here they also give you like some info about what uh, you will learn. It's about aluminum, uh, silicon, ferrous alloy, uh, silicon and solar cells, carbon material, production of metals from their stable oxides, sustainable development, use recycle of material, technology for energy storage, such as batteries and hydrogen. And then what you will become you will be you will get a master of science in material science and engineering you can uh, work for companies uh, that require a metallurgist a corrosion engineer or any company that produce batteries or any energy storage technologies solar cells it and cons consultancy uh, even in transport and infrastructure and research and development some info about how the student life is going to be and the program structure. It's two year, the first and second semester. It's practical engineering courses. Uh, then you will have like a group project, expert in teamwork. You can get like exemption from this course if you have worked for three years or you can show that you have like three years of work experience. Then the third and the fourth semester, second year, you're going to work on your project, which will lead uh, to your kind of thesis, or they can be two separate uh, topics. Depends, uh, depends on uh, kind of your uh, supervisor. And then the admission, the most important part. So for this, you need a minimum of a Bachelor of Science or Bachelor of Engineering degree, which is normally three to four years, depending on your country. And uh, your grade needs to be average grade uh, C or even better. Candidates in, uh, from mechanical engineering in organic or physical chemistry or chemical engineering with a strong focus in material science and engineering may also be accepted. And if you need more info, you can contact them and get them. But uh, from the way I see it, you can just, if you have all the application, uh, like application documents and you apply on time uh, then it all depends on uh, how many people have applied how many places they have and who has the better grade so application deadline for people from non Schengen area it's 1st of December uh, from Schengen area and Swiss it's 1st of March Norwegian or Nordic students is until 15 of April and the requirement, uh, you need to have like 25 uh, credits in material, minimum, five credits in statistics, seven and a half credits in physics, and general chemistry. But uh, for students like, that are coming from Iran, um, 
do you if you have more than uh, C, which is like fourteen out of twenty, um, and uh, it should be okay. If you also do the um, Nukut that I previously mentioned in one of the videos, I think it was for the application for visa. If you have that, it also helps. If you don't, don't worry. Uh, then you kind of need to, let's see what else you need. You need to have the uh, diploma of your bachelor with grade C. Um, and yes, tuition fee, as I said, this is new. So the tuition fee, we can check how much it's going to be for material students. Application requirement is first degree, bachelor degree in the relevant field, uh, English prof uh, proficiency, which we will see again. I think it required six or six and a half. But uh, applicant to international master degree at Antinu can find information about how to cover English language requirement. Um, yeah. So accepted English uh, proficiency test is TOEFL, uh, which uh, they do not accept TOEFL Home Edition or TOEFL Essential. So minimum score is 90 points on internet-based and 600 points on paper-based test. Uh, remember that this result must be sent directly from ATS to NTNU. And in addition to you uploading them in Soknad's web. Uh, so, and the code is going to be 9652. And if you are going to do IELTS, they do not accept IELTS online, academic test with a minimum based score of 6.5 on each part of the test. This is for IELTS and TOEFL. Or if you want to do the University of Cambridge test, at least one of these first certificate in English, a certificate in advanced English. Uh, you need to have one of these, or Certificate of Proficiency in English. And the last one is Pearson Academic English Test, uh, or you can do the PTE Academic Online, with a minimum score of 62. And remember that uh, TOEFL, IELTS, and Pearson should not be, the results should not be older than two years. The deadline for uploading language requirement documentation is the same as the application deadline. So for international student, it was 1st of December. It's going to be 1st of December for language 2. If your application deadline is 1st of December, yes, as I said. Uh, so if you need to like uh, other proof of English and exemption is passing English grade from the region high school in Nordic countries. So as I said, if you are uh, coming, like moving with your parents to Norway and your kid is less than 18 or even in high school, like even in the first year of university, they're going to um, have to go through last year of high school and one year, uh, which they're going to be taught about uh, social studies in English. So it says if you have uh, English grade from this Norwegian high school, you're going to be okay. You don't need to do the TOEFL and IELTS. They also accept international uh, bachelorate with a minimum score of five, uh, four. Then, this is not for people from Iran, but applicants from Schengen countries or EU, EEA countries, they need to have a high school diploma. Uh, from an exempted, uh, exempted country, certificate document that you meet the B2 English language test. Uh, note that IELTS 6 is not enough. Or you can have one year of study at a university physically located in Austria, Canada, Australia, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, Great Britain, USA, uh, which the language of instruction have been English. So I think we don't need the rest of this, unless there's a mention of, nope. So this is the language uh, proficiency that you need. And then for tuition, um, for tuition, let's see, exemption, 
I'm afraid Iranian people are not exempt from tuition fee, so you need to have a tuition fee. So, here, uh, it's going to be material science and engineering. So, for, as you see, medical sciences, uh, NTNU Art Academy, for bachelor, you need to pay tuition fee 521 per year. For category B, music performance, architecture, and design structure, uh, design studies, clinical psychology, master 390. Seven thousand uh, category C science and technology studies graduate level. I think uh, engineering uh, engineers coming from Iran are going to be in this category. So you're going to have to pay the tuition fee of two hundred seventy one thousand hundred kroner. And this is apart from the money that you need to show that you can support yourself while living in here. Mm. And then graduate level studies in humanities, social science, economics, technology, five-year teacher's education, several health studies on undergraduate level, and in, in continuing professional education, you need to have 197,000 krona per year. And you can see the rest of them. So you will be exempt if you have a permanent residency in Norway, if you're married to or have a kid with a Norwegian citizen, if you have come to Norway through asylum or you have strong humanitarian consideration or a special connection to Norway, family member of the EEA citizen living in Norway, citizens of Great Britain residing in Norway before 31st December 2020, if you come here through family immigration, if you have a full-time work, Education? Hmm. It says if you have studied in Norway during the past three years and completed 180 uh, credit uh, full time equivalent during this time, there cannot be any gap in your studies. So, technically, if you, for example, have studied here for three years and you have a bachelor, that's the duration of a bachelor. Because in master you get 120, not 180. So if you have been studying in Norway, then you're exempt, Exem uh, but your study needs to be continuous. So no gap in your study and uh, you need to be, uh, have been admitted to NTNU. Exemptions are given for up to one year in cases of illness or childbirth. So then these are the requirements that you need to upload. Then if you are a citizen of EU or EEA country or Switzerland, you are entitled to, in, uh, entitled to support uh, from Lonekassen. Lonekassen is um, giving students here a monthly kind of loan. So it's about 9,000 something uh, up to now. They might increase it uh, every year. So every month, but apart from June and July, which is like summer uh, vacation, they get this 9000 and they can pay their rent and their... Uh, yeah, they can use this money for rent and uh, just living expenses. And uh, after they are done with their studies, and uh, after it's been like six months that they have graduated, and they have a job, then they can start repaying this loan. But uh, most of the cases, 30% uh, of this loan is going to be like uh, given to the student as a gift. So they only need to repay 70% of it. But it could be up to 50%, uh, I think, depends on how good you've been in your studies. Um, and then uh, you can decide uh, how much you want to pay every month. Uh, then how much you have to pay? It says, did your admission letter not mention tuition fee? Then let's read why. And uh, you can read about uh, refund, reimbursement.
and if you have questions uh, you can directly ask the admission office uh, so maybe one difference from Norwegian universities and US is that if you want to apply for a master here uh, you need to go through the admission office uh, despite US that you need to find a professor and start talking to them and select them as a supervisor and then they uh, accept you into their team and then you get the offer it's uh, the opposite so here is like master's university based that system is for PhD but PhD here is like a job so we can go through that again so here it was the English admission uh, we had the you need the diploma bachelor you need the English you need to pay tuition fee and then what you need to do Excellent academic performance. MNM requirement for admission to most program is grade C. Yes. Uh, and then deadline, which was 1st of December. And then you will uh, get the respond during no lose. That's when I got it. Like it was 12 of no lose. Uh, so. You will get the response in middle of April. Mm. That you are accepted or not, and then you have a little bit of time to accept or reject. And then if you accept, uh, you have to go through the rest of the process, which is transferring uh, the money. You're, uh, I'm not sure if you also need to transfer the tuition fee, but that time it was I had to transfer the money for living expenses for one year to university's bank account um, and then they will give me a document that I can use for my visa uh, then uh, this is not for you if you have a bachelor if you do not have a bachelor degree from a Nordic country but have a Norwegian citizenship no and uh, yeah those were for the deadlines so now preparation of the required document you need passports, you need documents of funding, you need your high school transcript and diploma, you need official transcript and official diploma of all your college university education. You need the English language documentation, you need a CV, you need verification reports of educational documents, bachelor, undergraduate degree, this, on, this only applies to applicant with the first degree from China or Pakistan. So this is not for you from Iran. Um, please check whether the program you are applying to require any specific additional document to be uploaded. Uh, so when I applied, I only uploaded uh, the IELTS CV. I think a statement of purpose, SOP, for uh, that I will return. And uh, why you need to accept me. Uh, then the kind of uh, letter that shows I could support myself while I'm here studying. Mm, my transcript and diploma from bachelor, high school, and uh, you know, high school can be considered both three years and four year. So depending on if you have like three years and one year or four years uh, from same institute. Uh, you need both of them and then um, yeah it was just those um, you don't need to really send hard copies uh, by post you can just um, scan them you can use your phone or just go outside and uh, ask one of these stores that copy to scan your document but your phone will also suffice so just scan it uh, and upload it in their system um, and when you come here uh, when you accept it and you came finally to Norway um, they will set a date that uh, you will go to the admission office and show the original documents you just need to show it uh, they, they will not hold it uh, they just need to see that this is you and that's what you show and then it's the application process so uh, you have to go to the application portal so it looks like this 
for for NTNU you have this, but if you just uh, you can use it for other universities too. See here you have the uh, list of universities in Norway that uh, support this uh, Soknat swap. Mm. And then when you are here, you kind of mm, you need to use one of these methods to log in. So login international applicants. So you enter your uh, you're gonna enter your um, email address and passport, and then log in. Then after you log in, you uh, you kind of have to you can apply for two uh, subjects for master. Uh, that time it was two. So when you apply for two, you can kind of prioritize which one you want to be considered first, and uh, then you're gonna click next, and you can upload all your documents. Uh, you can come and visit uh, this. Uh, website as much as you like multiple times to upload your document uh, it will be kind of closed for uploading after the deadline and when you get the respond uh, I think you need to come back here and accept that and then what else uh, then FAQs and if you need contact information you can contact so let's see uh, what else we can find here. Mm. So this was a admission. You can contact uh, study abroad. Yes. Uh, the other thing. Okay. So they had like another one, joint Nordic master. This one is like um, is only for these program studies, uh, meaning that. It means that you, um, okay, location is Trondheim. Um, your partner university is, uh, you will get a double master's degree because you studied some of it in another university. And you get two degrees. Master in Maritime is a collaboration between four of the five leading technical universities in Nordic countries. Uh, you get to spend at least one semester at two of the partner universities. Um, then, for example, this one is between NTNU and Alto University in fin uh, Finland. So you get both NTNU's degree and Alto's degree. Uh, but I think you need to consider the uh, requirement for Alto University too. However, I think you